Hey there everybody, GMO73 here, bringing you another feature match for the week. Today I am showing off two of the new uh, Echoes of the New World Rulers, with thanks to my buddy Josh. Uh, we are playing at Big Kids Games in uh, Grand Rapids, great store, went up there this past weekend to check them out. Tons of fun. Uh, I am playing um, a light book variant that was sent to me by my friend Sarah Peck. Uh, I like to call this Butterfly Book, because it essentially is like using a uh, light book like an extra butterfly movie. Moonbeam, uh, Kage's but Moonbeam Butterfly, um, when the deck already has Moonbeam Butterfly in it as well, so it's just a lot about utility and, and grabbing what you need with either Book or Butterfly, um, really fun. And Josh is playing a four-color Edelbert that kind of focuses heavily more on the black-blue side um, for use of the like drawing and discarding element. So first turn he just plays a... Um, Bo gets a Black Silence and passes, go to me, I get a Gusting Skies and pass. Uh, I do have the Energize. Both decks take a little bit of time to start up. Uh, he's gonna go ahead and pass to me, I'm gonna recover, call stone and also pass. So really, really high uh, interaction here right at the beginning of the game. But, um, you know, both of these decks take a little bit of time to start up and, you know, we both have quick cast stuff. So you see him flash in that feasting so he can start poking me on his turn with it. Um, and then, uh, you know, also he uses that to be able to pump up um, stuff with inheritance and grab the um, monocle that he needs uh, to be able to produce red or tap down a creature or all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to take the six damage from feasting uh, and then I'm just going to pat. He's going to just going to let that happen. So he passes, and then I respond in turn with flashing in my zero. Um, so I also have a 6-6 six, six on the board, and now my stuff can't get bounced. Um, and then what you see here is I'm going to pay 3, and I'm going to go ahead and cast uh, Milliam. So Milliam here is excellent, because Milliam's going to give zero barrier, which is awesome, and plus 2, plus 2. So now... Um, Zero is going to be able to kill the Feasting. Now, he could have used Artemis Bow there. Uh, or, or Sorry, he can't even use Artemis Bow there because of the barrier. And that's why that's so good. So suddenly, I my creature is bigger than his. And he can't any way to like prevent Zero from killing it. Uh, and now, he's only going to be able to draw one card a turn. Which can also slow him down a little bit. Um, because he needs to find a way to get that Fire Will produced. Because his stones, I think, outside of a couple Rulers from Moria, don't have that accessibility. So he's going to play three, and he plays the um, the Illusion Wizard, which is produces a 4-4 four, four, uh, Water Darkness Shadow Token. So this is another thing that he uses. It's a lot of like duplications in terms of um, Edelbert, for Edelbert's effect. Uh, so he gets that 4-4 four, four token, and in this case, if Edelbert was on the field, he'd get to draw two, and I would discard two cards. It's a pretty big card swing. Um, but he taps for stone. I tap for stone, figuring out exactly how I want to play this will-wise. Uh... Making sure I'm spending things right. I'm going to go ahead and play three, and I'm going to bring out a second Milliam. So the reason why this is really good uh, is because now both the Milliams are 10-10s because they pump each other up, and they provide each other barrier. So at this point in time, I now have a field-wide barrier for as long as that uh, those two Milliams are on the field, which is pretty much forever unless he has a board wipe like Final Battle. So, because the two Milliams can't be targeted, so they're just completely safe. This is like part one of the kind of lock that board of uh, the Book of Light can kind of do, and we'll see how much more of that I can get as we go along. So he's going to go ahead and um, do the uh, monocle from his hand and then bestow it to the token. Um, and, I mean, you can still do that. It technically can still be tapped. It's still a resonator, so... Um, he sacrificed the Illusion Wizard over the token. I don't necessarily know why he didn't just sacrifice the token over the Illusion Wizard. They have the same stat line, um, but he probably because he wanted the Resonator in the grave potentially for Valentina um, to increase to decrease her cost and make her be able to be played the following turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and call for Stone. So. Now I'm at a point where, because I'm uh, kind of ahead, I can start setting up a bigger and bigger lock on him um, to start uh, setting up to a board state where he's just not going to be able to play, and um, Kage's Moonbeam Butterfly really helps for that. So in response to the cast, he's going to cast Amaterasu's Foresight, which kind of makes sense. He thinks maybe I'm going to be trying to grab another million and get a massive stat pump that'll just finish the game off, because that would work in this situation. I'd have a 10, uh, a 12, 12, four 12, 12s um, at that point, and so that would just be lethal if he didn't have a way to stop it. Um, 
but you know him casting it ahead of time just means that I can go in and grab what I think is probably the best call. Uh, and at this point in time, knowing that he has Resonators in Grave and knowing that he's black-blue, that he might try to play Valentina, a Dark Alice is probably my best bet. Um, we were going into this match blind. I didn't necessarily know exactly what he was playing, so Goddard Alice would not be effective here, the Alice that you can just Goddard name a card, um, because I don't necessarily know exactly what he's playing. Um, games 2 and Game 3, that card becomes much more powerful because you can uh, identify what better pieces to that can't be locked out with your other Will of Hopes, and thus create a position where, again, you really lock your opponent out from being able to play the game. Um, so that can be pretty helpful, but in game one, that's not too great. Whereas this way, now I turned Dark Alice into an 11-11, because she comes to 7-7, seven, seven, plus 4, plus 4, uh, and I get those creatures out there. So he's going to go into his turn. I, there's no reason to swing, because it won't do any damage. Goes into his turn, uses the token to produce red, flips Edelbert, and in response, I cast Dawn of the Earth with the mode to make it so if he does bring something into play without casting it, it would just get RFG'd. Reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want Edelbert to be able to bring in a creature um, that can potentially start swinging the things back in his favor. The longer I keep Josh off of pressure, um, the more and fewer Edelbert triggers he gets, the, the better my lock can become uh, and the stronger things get from there. So. He doesn't, he doesn't, uh, he fails to play anything off of Edelbert. It is a you may, so that's pretty nice. Um, Josh is also very nice and kind in letting me look at the Will of Hope creatures that I have in my sideboard. Um, normally in a tournament, you can't do that. So, uh, you know, if you're playing this competitively, just be mindful of that, that you need to remember what Will of Hopes you have. Um, and so I am going to go ahead and judgment here for four. Looking at Edelbert, making sure I know exactly how this works. Judgmenting for four. Let the trigger go through. He does not have a Dawn of the Earth. That could potentially be really, really bad. So I'm going to bring out Faria here. So at this point in time, I'm feeling pretty secure in the lock. So Faria is now going to start as a 13-13. She's going to prevent the first damage that I do every single turn. And she herself can... Or that's dealt to me every single turn. And she herself prevents the first damage to herself every turn. So I'm going to swing in with the Milium and attempt to have him block... Uh, try to force the Edelbert there because I did leave the one wheel up for Realist Volition. So this gives him a plus eight, plus eight, uh, and flying and barrier. Um, so I would have tried to kill Milium or try to kill Edelbert, but in response, he casts Foresight. So we just nobody dies. Um, but the reason why uh, Volition is really, really good in Will of Hope is because it costs one void um, if you cast it on a Will of Hope, so that it doesn't matter what will you leave up. And at that point, he, he draws his cards, and he's realized he's too far behind, the lock is too significant, and he's not going to be able to make it up. So he just passes the game there, and we go on to game two. So again, he chooses to... Um, he chooses to take uh, the play, which I think is very interesting. I think giving in this format, I think it's better to actually take the draw. Taking your opponent off that extra will coin, although it seems kind of weird. Um, like you dropping a two drop on turn one is still very, very good. We have a lot of good utility two drops right now, uh, as well as just having them have access to the color. Like if he was to take the draw, uh, he'd have red and wouldn't have to worry about trying to find red to flip Edelbert. Um, so he just plays that bow, calls the stone and then passes. Um, assuming we're probably going to see something pretty similar from me. Um, don't really have much in the way of early game pressure for the deck. That's the other reason why I took, uh, why being on the draw for um, book is pretty nice, because most of the time you're not dropping anything turn one anyway, so then you can drop a pretty powerful turn two play. Um, you can drop a three drop milium or something like that pretty easily. So he's going to cast that Melfi during the end step of my turn, um, trying to ramp forward, and in response to Melfi's trigger, I'm just going to go ahead and soul debt it, put it back to the bottom of the deck. Um, that's one of the really good things about Soul Debt is you can mess with these kind of flicker uh, creatures or, or quick cast creatures um, and really kind of help keep the curve on where you want it to be. Um, calls for Stone passes to me. I call for Stone, hit my third Black Silence um, at this point, which is kind of unfortunate. I'm going to go ahead and pass as well. Not Nothing really much to do. He's not really doing anything. Melfi comes into play. Can't really stop that one, so... That's going to come in and get resolved. So he has now successfully ramped ahead. Um, 
As you can see there in my hand, I think I have a million, but I'm trying to see if I can set up a second million or, or a quick cast or something. He's going to go ahead and right away get that judgment from Adelbert. Um, this is pretty good for him, especially since the uh, creature, the thing hasn't been established. So he can start getting a lot of value out of those Adelbert summons. Uh, I unfortunately don't have anything to be able to... Um, stop Edelbert from coming in, but he chooses not to put in a Resonator, which I feel like is really weird. Uh, like, there was nothing stopping him from putting in a Resonator there. Um, maybe he forgot that it could be any Resonator, and he just doesn't have a Wanderer, or something like that. Um, especially since he has Resonators in his hand, he might have just forgotten um, that Edelbert can grab anything. But I am going to quick cast into zero, and then out comes the Milium. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and try to attack the Melfi. Now, the reason why this is happening is because, again, if he tries to block with the Edelbert, I do have the Volition in hand. But now Josh has probably got a read on that, so he's not going to be dealing with it. Uh, he's not going to be as willing to deal with that anymore and put himself in a bad position there. So he's got that um, Charlotte's Water Transformation Magic, which is pretty nice. Goes ahead and calls for Stone because he wants to start being able to play the creatures pretty effectively casts the uh, illusion um, which when it dies generates a token so this is good because it he can use it as a blocker on my turn which then may, forces me to draw and discard a card because another creature comes into play pretty strong defensive card for Edelbert that also gets him a lot of value right away he has already drawn for turn so with zero he doesn't get the draw trigger off of it um, but it is still very good and he does have that um, you see in his hand he's got um, Dawn of the Earth, so if I try to wait too long to flip the book, he can actually lock me out of book by using Dawn of the Earth. It's a pretty powerful play against Light Book and Dark Book that you just have to be careful with. I also have a, Dawn, a couple Dawns of the Earth, but at this point in time with Edelbert flipped, it doesn't really do much. Debating on whether or not to cast Volition during the upkeep. Trying to see what I might want to do. At this point in time, getting a second million would still really be really good. I don't have a high speed dash in my hand, um, which is a little bit less than ideal. Um, but uh, I might have to wait a little bit. But getting a second million could be really, really strong here. Because again, I'm setting up the lock. If I wanted to, I could also use that Christy to just RFG the uh, token dude. And then um, use the Volition to pump up and then kill Edelbert and just get rid of it right now. Um, because because then I wouldn't have to deal with the minus two minus two or the the minus a card him drawing a card because uh, Christy removes it from the game. So still debating on whether or not I want to cast Evolution yet. It's probably best that I don't. Um, just want to play it safe. Oh, I do have that high speed dash in my hand. I must have just drawn it. So there's actually really no reason for me to not go ahead and try to do judgment here. Um, with the high speed dash, I'll be able to reload it next turn and again set up that lock very similarly to what I had last game with double million Faria. So here comes the first million, you know, to back up the other million. Now both of them are protecting from each other, and I've got this board full of 10 tens um, that is very, very powerful. So I start to move into attack, and then I reckon he generates, no, 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 I move into attack, and then he generates the dude, uh, and I completely forgot it generates a token, so I have to discard a card, I get punished here a little bit. Um, this is why we read cards, it, and that's why, like I said in the commentary, it's a good blocker, um, because it lets him generate that extra card advantage, because now he just draw the card from it on his my turn, so then he can draw for turn on his turn, and he still gets to get all those cards back. Um, I could have still pressured in with the Million, but it really wouldn't have done much. Uh, in the upkeep, he's going to go ahead and flash in the Feet Sing, so now his um, now his Edelbert has Flying and Barrier for the turn, um, which could potentially be very, very bad. So he has a Dawn of the Earth, uh, another Bow, which doesn't do anything. Um, lots of different options here for what he wants to do. Uh, he can play more creatures to try to make me discard more stuff. He's got another shadow. I think at this point it's best for him to just try to establish kind of a wall. Um, the more the, sure, yes, the longer it takes, or the longer things go. Um, 
the more of a lock I have, but at the same time, the longer it takes, the more he value he's going to get off of that Edelbird if he continues to keep it alive. Um, and eventually he'll hit that Valentina, which is probably what he's looking for, because the Valentina will get him a new creature every turn, and it's essentially just a free trigger for, free one to two triggers off of, um, off of, uh, Edelbert every single turn, especially if he hits the Illusion Wizard using Valentina, like frequently every turn, just 4-4, four, four, brings in a 4-4, four, four, two draw triggers, two discard triggers. Um, swings for four with the token, I'm gonna go ahead and let that slide, I have no reason to worry about that four damage. So he's sitting here trying to think about exactly what he wants to do here does have that flying but he has to be careful because Volition does add flying and I'm kind of representing Volition right now having any kind of extra will does represent Volition thinking about whether or not I want to cast Volition here uh, and whether or not it's a good move. Um, but I decide to go ahead and just take the damage. Because again, 12's not huge right now, and I can crack back pretty severely. Uh, and it's probably better for me to use Volition in times where um, to kind of force a little bit better plays or, or, f or push for a lot of damage. Because the plus eight plus eight off of Volition is pretty intense. Plays the bow, not that it does anything. Plays the shadow guy, I have to discard a card. Um, he doesn't get to draw because of zero. I'm gonna go ahead and discard the Dawn of the Earth. It's not really doing anything at this point in time. Um, his Edelbert's already out. I draw for turn and then I high speed dash, which will essentially reload my book. So the way book works is if the creature dies, book flips back over, but if book flips back over and the creature's still on board, that creature just stays. Uh, so high speed dash is really good because you can, for books, because you can reload the book essentially uh, and then recover and then immediately use it again. So now I get to go in and grab another uh, a part of my lock, um, which is probably going to be Faria, um, just because she does a lot, or I can try to tap out and grab Prissia, but that again is not nearly as good because it keeps me vulnerable from um, potentially using the um, Volition, it taps me out for the turn. So again, we're hitting that same kind of board state we did last time. This also serves as protection from Edelbert if it gets flying. I can just let that damage go through, um, and I have the will for Volition. So with a similar board state to I had last game, I've got four, three 10-10s, ten a 13-13, thirteen, thirteen, and two ways to prevent damage every turn. So even though I'm at 24 life, that damage is not going to be coming in at me very often from here on out, especially since they all have barrier. So now Josh has to play, you know, decide if he wants to try to just mass his own board state uh, or try to push in damage. Um, and it probably is better for him to just, yeah, like that call stone and try to get as many Edelbert triggers, generate that advantage that way as possible. Especially if he plays Final Battle. If he can somehow get to a Final Battle and wipe the board, that would be pretty devastating for me. I've already done a lot of work and his board is pretty strongly established. So in comes the Illusion Wizard, like I said, so here I'm going to be discarding two cards. He doesn't get to draw any because of the zero, um, but still, that's a lot of free advantage. He got two creatures and ripped two cards out of my hand, all for three will. Um, pretty, pretty good value there. Unfortunately, she's got the Dawn of the Earth, which is awesome. Uh, if I try to, you know, quick cast book back again. Goes to swing in, and I start to go block. And then I'm like, wait a second. No, I'm not going to do that, because it'll just generate a creature. And then uh, I'll discard another card. And the first damage is negated anyway, because of Faria. So I let him swing in. And then he's like, oh, wait, yeah, the first damage is negated anyway with Faria. So, so he just swings in. Nothing really happens. We move on. Um, <laughs> nobody gets any value out of it. Uh, but now if he wanted to swing with like the Illusion Wizard or something else, he could make that happen. He's got a blocker for every one of my creatures at this point to protect his Edelbert, which is nice. Unfortunately, none of them have flying, so if I did want to use the Volition, I could. Um, but again, it's a matter of whether that is worth it. 
So I drew into another volition, so at this point in time I'm saying, yes, it is worth it, I'm gonna go ahead and volition my Milium, make him a flyer, so I can get over and kill your Edelbert. Get it off the board. Swinging into the Edelbert for 18. Nothing really he can do. So at this point in time, now I can try to kill that token thing, get it off the get it off the board as well before he gets that second uh, piece of value off of it. I'm gonna go ahead and play a rewriting laws. Maybe see if I can draw into something better. Untap my um, deep woods. Draw into another rewriting laws. Doesn't really do much there. So I'm sitting on rewriting laws and volition. If he happens to be playing severing winds, that'd be pretty bad. Um, gonna go ahead and swing in at his face for 10. He's thinking about whether or not he wants to take that damage or block with something. And I have to be pretty careful here. He decides to uh, use the um, Dawn of the Earth to try to pump it up. He'll draw a card because of the Dawn of the Earth mode and then he'll block um, so he generates the free creature there. So, cost him a Dawn of the Earth, but Dawn of the Earth probably wasn't doing much more of anything anyway. Um, and then his creature will die. I'll play two. I'll try to cast the Rewriting Laws again. No Severing Winds in his hand, so let's see if I can draw into something of value. Um, and then I'll do something really stupid and I'll forget to tap for stone because Book is out on the field, so there's no reason for me to not call for stone, but I'm not thinking about it. So there's a lesson there of something not to do. So calling for stone for Josh, he does play Reulas in the deck. He told me this after the fact, so at this point in time, he's starting to just find a Reula, and there it was. He's probably holding onto that for a while. So starting next turn, he'll be able to make use of that uh, Edelbert again, which is pretty good for him. Now I have left him a little bit of an opening with the milliums to try to get the milliums killed, um, but again, he's got to be really careful about that because I might be, um, I'm definitely representing the idea of having Riula's Volition. Don't forget to tap for stone this time, call it right away, get it on there. Swinging for 10, try to get that damage in, he decides to block it with the Riula since it's done its job. Swing in for 10 with the Milium. He decides to go ahead and to take that damage. Goes down to 30. And again, I'm leaving up Faria and Milium. And the reason why I'm leaving up the two of those is because I want to be able to keep both Milliums protected. Um, so by having two blockers up like this and Milium's already a 10-10, with the stuff that's on board, it's very, very difficult for that Milium to be killed. Um, even if, you know, he has some ways of doing pumps. So right now on board damage-wise, he has uh, 12, 16, uh, 22 damage. Um, so if I can block even two of those creatures um, with Faria or something like that, even after Milium takes one of those hits, um, it's probably not going to be enough to kill the Milium, which is very, very good. And if he tries to swing in with the, the creatures to kill the Milium, he'll be losing the creatures. So that just benefits me even more. Unfortunately, you see his hand there looks like Charlotte's Water Transformation Magic Heteroclite Heteroclite. So his hand is literally dead at this point. There are no cards in his hand that can target anything on my side of the field. Um, all of my cards are safe. He is essentially setting with a hand of zero cards. And since none of them are creatures, even if he flips over Edelbert, he's not going to get any value off of it. All that we'll be doing will be giving him a creature. Which might be important. You know, giving it flying might be important enough. But we'll have to see. So he's recognizing that he has to get that mil those milliums off the board. Otherwise, this is going to get really rough really fast, even with the healed uh, Edelbert. So he's going to swing in the first token. That damage is going to go through. Going to let it happen. Swings in the second token. Again, choosing not to block, seeing what's going to happen out of that. So Milium has four damage on him, six to go.
Josh is gonna use Apollo to bounce the feasting back to his hand, which is gonna make it for the inheritance. So he's doing this to try to make it a trade um, for the feasting so that he can try to get that Milium off the board. Because if he's successfully was able to get Milium off the board, um, the sad thing is none of those cards would still do anything because Milium himself has barrier. Um, but uh, he's gotta start trying to pick off those Milium somehow because um, if he can get both of them off the board, um, then he will be in much better shape uh, and can start just keeping my board clear very, very easily. Spends another Volition here to after he pumps up to make it so that the token will still be dead and my feast, my Milium's still alive. And so at this point in time, having the two blockers, uh, unless he suddenly has another Feasting in his hand, um, my uh, Milium is going to survive, or my two Milliums are going to survive. And the reason why killing one Milium doesn't matter is because I've hit five stones, so now um, both Milliums are protecting themselves as well because of their seals. So he attempts to spring in again to see if he can kill it. I'll block with the one Milium, that'll die. Uh, and then at that point he's choosing whether or not to use the Illusion Wizard, um, and Faria can just block it if he wants to. He knows he has to make an effort here, because if he doesn't, he's just going to get blown out. Um, in response to the casting of Edelbert, again, just in case he has something to bring into play, I'm going to go ahead and cast the um, Dawn of the Earth to try to set that up. Goes into my turn, drawing for turn. He's got those two blockers here, neither which of them can fly. I have the Volition in my hand, uh, lots of creatures here, um, recover only 3,000 life to con deal damage with, or I, I topped decked it, or no, I had another Volition in my hand here, I think. So I play the Abdul, um, which is actually really risky, um, because if he had Severing Winds, you see there's that Volition in my hand. If he had the Severing Winds, um, now the Volition is uh, cancelable, which was probably a mistake just in case. I haven't seen a Severing Winds all match, but I need to be respectful of Severing Winds. So he, I swing in for the uh, 10. He decides to take that damage, and this is the reason why casting the Abdul was a mistake. Um, so as soon as the 10 damage had gone through from zero, I could have just cast Volition on um, Faria, pumping her up to being a 21-21 with flying and barrier, and then I could have just swung over his whole board and killed him. I didn't have to play any kind of risks. Josh wouldn't have been able to make any plays about it, um, and it would have just been the end of the game. But now I've risked myself being able to take down an Abdul, um, uh, or take a Severing Winds, and that could have been really, really risky. So he blocks with the Edelbert. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cast a Volition on the Edelbert, and Josh is like, yeah, you have another Volition. I can't really answer that. And so that is the end of the game, because the rest of my creatures just swing in, uh, and he can't come back at that point. His hand is dead. He knows he can't do anything. So that is the match. Huge thanks to Josh for the games. Thanks to Sarah for shipping me the list and allowing me to modify it a little bit. These lists will both be up later this week. Go ahead and let me know what you guys think of the feature match, uh, and maybe if you want to see a different light book or different Edelbert variant later in the future. Huge thanks again to Josh for being able to play the match go ahead and like comment subscribe and share out the video to all your book loving and edelbert loving friends hopefully this gives you a good idea of what to do kind of and how these decks rulers run but until next time guys this is dmo 73 signing off